اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہم صلی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و سلم سلام من تامن علی سیدنا مولانا محمد اللذی تنحل بالقد و تنفرج به القرب و تغدا بالهوائج و تنال به رغائب و حسن الخواتیم و استسق الغمام و وجیل کریم و علی آلہ و صحابہ فی کل لمحتین و نفسین بیدد کل معلوم لکا یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ تعالی و برکاتہ You are watching Saturday Time and I am your host, Hafiz Dr. Nisar Ahmed Marfani. We are approaching the end of Ramadan and we are in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Today is going to be the 28th of Ramadan. And our topic, as I discussed yesterday, for today is parents. And Alhamdulillah, we have amongst us one, un, uh, one more time, uh, His Eminence, the Chairman Sunni Ulama Council, Cape Town, the Chairman of Sabri Chishti, Sabri Ashrafi Relief Fund, Principal of Islamia School, Grassi Park, Hazrat Allama Maulana Muhammad, Mohsin Ashrafi Sahab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah, Hazrat, uh, for your precious time Alhamdulillah, once again. Alhamdulillah. As, as we are approaching the end of Ramadan Allah and Allah. we did discuss one uh, uh, in the past as well, the parents, and we had so many requests uh, in the form of messages that we should uh, uh, bring another session in regards to parents. I want you to uh, just elaborate the actual definition of parents and what are actually parents if it comes to the children. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Ji, as you have so rightfully mentioned that uh, we are coming to the end of Ramadan and you know a beautiful hadith comes to mind where the Prophet ﷺ says that the one who shows signs of happiness when Ramadan comes and signs of sadness when the month leaves for that person Jannah becomes compulsory. Subhanallah. Allah. And as we find ourselves saddened as these beautiful days and nights of Ramadan leave us Yes, a beautiful topic, uh, one that I cherish so, so much, it's about parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted parents a, such a maqam, such a status. We cannot really comprehend the status of parents. When Allah speaks about His worship in the Quran, then Allah follows it up with the parents. Subhanallah, and this is so beautiful. Can you imagine the maqam and the status of, of, of parents? And in a beautiful hadith, Rasulullah also mentions that your parents, they are so important. They are both your Jannah and your Jahannam. Allah. They are both your Jannah and your Jahannam. So it is upon us. We can decide whether we want Jannah or Jahannam. Hmm. By looking after, caring, and taking care, and respecting our honorable parents. Subhanallah. I'll continue the discussion on parents, but I want to read uh, one Ham Sharif. Let's read the salutation upon the best of creation. Allahumma salli ala Sina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahabihi wa barik wa sallim. کہتی ہے یہ پھولوں کی جدا اللہ ہو اللہ اللہ ہو اللہ اشجار کے پتوں نے پڑا اللہ ہو اللہ اللہ ہو اللہ بادل نے آسمہ پہ لکھا اللہ ہو اللہ بادل نے آسمہ پہ لکھا اللہ بٹی قطاروں کی ردا اللہ 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 شب نمگیری جو پھولوں پہ پڑتی ہوئی سنا شب نمگیری جو پھولوں پہ پڑتی ہوئی سنا شب نمگیری جو پھولوں پہ پڑتی سنا شب نمگیری جو پھولوں پہ پڑتی ہوئی سنا بل بل نے دیکھ کر یہ کہا اللہ ہو اللہ اللہ ہو اللہ اللہ ہو اللہ 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 ہو اللہ اللہ ہو اللہ 
سب نظر کے عالم میں ہو مولا یہ جا گئے جب نظر کے عالم میں ہو مولا یہ سنا گئے جب نظر کے عالم میں ہو مولا ذکر تیرا اللہ 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 I thought you were discussing about the parents. What are the responsibilities like in, in nowadays where we are living in? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> Firstly, let me say, fortunate is that child hmm. who still has his or her parents with him. You can never be too rich, too learned, too old to respect and honor your parents. Our parents brought us into this dunya and there are so many hukuk and rights that the parents have over the children. You know, the parents sacrificed all these years and what they sacrificed today, we cannot sacrifice. Today we always want to say they are old fashioned or, or you know, we, we lose our, our cool, uh, as the youngsters say, we don't have enough sabr. And, and if you look at what they went through. You know, there's a beautiful hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, where Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam speaks about our interaction with parents and the effects of those interactions. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says that every sin, every sin that a person commits uh, on this dunya, Allah will give you, if he desires, he will punish you in the hereafter. Illa ukukal walidain. But the disobedience you show towards your parents. You will get the punishment. That the will happen here in this dunya already before you die. So it just shows that parents and, and, and the hukuk of parents and the rights of parents is something so important that if we do not fulfill this condition, then our ibadat is nullified. Hmm. And of what use is that life where your ibadat is nullified? Imagine you want to go for hajj and your parents are unhappy with you. You want to fast the month of Ramadan, your parents are unhappy with you. So it was asked, Ya Rasulullah, who is the best people, the best company that I should be with? And what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Ummuk. Subhanallah. Second mother, time Ummuk. Three times. Yes. Ummuk, thumma abuk. Then your father. Yeah. Cherish them, honor them. And when youngsters come to me and they say, Maulana, we, I'm, I'm not uh, successful in, in anything in my life or in my work, I always ask them, what is your connection, firstly, with your creator, and secondly, with your parents? Hmm. Because dua of a mother, dua of a father, you know, the hadith says, a dua raddul qada. That dua even changes your fate. It changes your fate. So the dua that a parent makes in the honor of a child, it is mentioned that that dua is greater and more readily accepted than the dua which a wali of Allah makes. Can you imagine this? Allah Akbar. The dua of a parent for the child, child. is greater than the dua of a wali, wali. of Allah. Allah Akbar. You, you must have heard Sultan al-Arifin say yes, Bayezid yes, Bustami. Yes, yes, yes. It was asked that, oh, Bayezid Bustami, how did you achieve this maqam of, of Sultan al-Arifin? And he says, it's only the dua of my mother. The dua of my mother. We know the incident where he spent the entire night by her yes. bedside with a glass of water yes. and she fell asleep Sweet. and she made a dua. Allah. Musa Kalimullah alayhi yes. salatu was, uh, he asked that oh Allah will be my companion in Jannah and Allah said to him, it's a person who's got a little shop, he sells meat. And Musa alayhi salam went to go investigate me, Kalimullah, and I will have an ordinary person being my companion in Jannah. And when he found out what 
was happening, he saw that this person, more than what he loved his own children and his own family, he loved his parents. Allah He spent time with them. He made them comfortable. Before he made the, his own children comfortable, he would make them comfortable. He would, see, he would see to their needs. And the mother would lift her hands that, Oh Allah, grant my son everything of the best in the dunya and grant him the companionship of Musa alayhi salam. Subhanallah. And subhanallah, that was a dua of a mother. Musa alayhi salam, just before uh, 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 I end off, um, Musa alayhi salatu salam used to speak to Allah. Kalimullah. He used to speak to Allah. When Musa alayhi salatu salam's mother passed away, and he approached Allah, and he started speaking to Allah, Allah said to him, Oh Musa, from today you have to be careful. Your mother is no more. Your mother is no more. I've got another incident Allah which Allah. happened in the life, of, at the time of Sayyidi Alam Sallam, when one person was dying, but his ruh was not going out. Jeez. And companions of Asya Rasulullah, he is in the deathbed, but the soul is not taking, uh, going away from his body. What is the reason behind why he's in so much of pain? And then Prophet went, I believe, uh, if you are aware of that one, we'll going to, we are going to discuss that as well, but we have to go for a short break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. خدا نے مجھے کو دیا تیری دعاؤں سے کی ہوا ماں کی دعا جنت کی ہوا مجھے گران پہ سد تلے ہوئے تھے مگے مجھے گران پہ سد تلے ہوئے تھے مگے دشمنوں سے بچا ماں تیری دعا سے تیری دعا سے بھی جو میرا میں کیا ماں تیری دعا سے تیری دعا سے قسم ہے اسے 
जागे का कुछ कमाल नहीं कसम से में सना गए का कुछ कमाल नहीं रोज मुझे को मिला माँ तेरी दुआ से तेरी दुआ से So welcome back to your viewers. We are talking about the incident which happened in the time of Prophet Sallallahu when uh, one of the person, his uh, soul was not departing from his body and then they inquired about it and Prophet Sallallahu said, if his mom is alive, call her. And then uh, we heard that uh, Prophet Sallallahu called the mother and she said, I don't want to forgive him because he has done so much in the past. Prophet said, okay, let's bring the matches. To, uh, yeah, so, and then uh, mother, out of love, she said, I forgive him. As she said that, the soul departed from the body. So this is the dua and the bad dua of the parents. And they, you have, you know, they are responsibilities on you, how to treat your parents. And especially, we have so many questions which we have, uh, um, we want to discuss with uh, Maulana, inshallah, in next seven to eight minutes. And I will bring this topic first. I want to discuss this. What is mean by uff? Subhanallah. Wala taqul lahuma uffin. It's mentioned in the kalam of Allah. Allah says, don't say uff to them. Uff is not just a word. Uff is not, not just a word. word. It is to shrug them off. Hmm. Whether it be in action, whether it be in intention, hmm. uh, whether it be a sigh, whatever it is that brings displeasure to the parent. Hmm. Right. That is uff. So you could maybe just make a sign. Hmm. A sign uh, that would be considered as an uff. Ah, you can say anything. So, you know, Dr. Saab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made compulsory upon us good deeds. Right. Good deeds. Every good deed will be weighed against the intention. Mm. Right. Depends on your intention. When mm. you do something, what was your intention behind it? Besides parents. For parents... Yes, intention will be questioned. But what did the heart say? Allah. What was the feeling within the heart? When you smiled to your mother, when you spoke to your father, what did this heart say? And we are going to be answerable according to the feelings we had towards our parents. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Can you imagine? The respect, you know, we can speak about the respect. Rasul alayhi salatu was salam is the Rasul of his our entire ummah. Hmm. He is the Rasul of his mother. Hmm. He is the Rasul of his mother. But yet the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam showed us how we need to honor them, how we need to respect them. Today we sit on a couch, we lie down, the hmm. parents are standing in front of us, uh, and, and we do not even stand up or sit up out of respect for them. One beautiful incident, Ja'arana, you must have heard. Yeah, I've what happened? Baby, the Prophet yeah. sallallahu was distributing meat. Sahaba were all faced towards the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa And out of nowhere, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa stands up in, in a very respectable way, manner. And sits down after a while. He carries on with dishing out the meat. And then again, the Prophet stands up. The Sahaba Ikram did not realize what was happening, uh, transpiring. So they asked, Ya Rasulullah, why did you stand up? On two occasions, with the utmost of respect, what was the reason? And the Prophet ﷺ said to them, perhaps you were unaware, but I could see my foster mother passing. Subhanallah. I could see my foster mother passing, and I stood up out of respect for her. Subhanallah. This is the Nabi of Allah speaking here. Subhanallah. Look at this respect, the, this amount of respect. And this is what we need to inculcate within our children. Very important. If there's not going to be respect for parents, we cannot find the happiness of Allah. And that's why the, the next question is linked with this one. Uh, did Prophet ﷺ ever prohibit a Sahabi from joining him on an expedition or a holy war? Gee, gee, the Prophet ﷺ did. Uh, there were times where Sahaba Ikram, they requested, they wanted to go on jihad. And the Prophet would inquire, do you have parents? Are they in need of your presence? 
Do they need you physically with them? Do you need to be with them and help them? And when the answer was in the affirmative, the Prophet ﷺ would tell them, you cannot go for jihad. Allah. First, see to the needs of your parents. Verily, by seeing to their needs, by making them comfortable, Allah will grant you the reward of jihad. SubhanAllah. Allah will grant you the reward of jihad. And now in this era where we're living, if we compare the past, definitely we are living in a very modern environment and culture we have adopted, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. There is a question which came through. Uh, what is the ruling with regards to the punishment of not obeying the command of Allah in, the, in, in, in regards to hijab? In regards to? Hijab, hijab. the veil. Yeah, a lot of parents, they, they might be following this, they put the hijab on them themselves, but they don't uh, command in the yeah, children. In the children and it's vice versa as well. Yeah. So how do we take it? This the punishment will be uh, on parents. If they don't give the command to their children on the day of judgment, they will be responsible or the children will be responsible not to obeying their parents. Uh, firstly, the responsibility is for the parents. Right. right. It's for the parents to guide the children. Hmm. If the parents did their duty, if they fulfill their duty, and, then, and the child still goes contrary to that, then the parents will not be held responsible. But there is one thing they say, especially when a person claims that my heart is clean, so I don't need to put hijab. This is absolutely what is happening nowadays. If you ask them, please put the hijab on you, say, no, 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 my heart is clean. Yeah. So is this shaitan? Uh, definitely. What is inside needs to be outside. That's right. What is outside needs to be inside. You can't take a, 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 a tiger skin and put it over a lamb yeah. and, and then say that that is a tiger. No. Yeah. You understand? So by saying my heart is clean, my heart is pure, your heart might be pure. Who knows? That's right. The other person, if their heart is clean or heart is pure. Hijab is a necessity within the deen. It has to be there, right? Um, so these are responsibilities. And... If the parents have fulfilled their responsibility, not just hijab, but anything else, the parent must inculcate that the child performs salah, the child needs to fast, all, all these uh, 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 duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the parents have done their duty, it lies now solely if the child is baligh, mm. the child has reached the age of puberty, it is now the responsibility of the child to fulfill what the parent has taught them. If it was right, yes, you are compelled to follow. But there are times where it's not compulsory to follow the parent. And that's only once, one time. And that is, if the parent gives you an order which is contrary to Islam. the kalam of Allah. Yeah. Or the laws of Allah. The parent tells you, don't perform salah. Don't wear hijab. Don't fast in the month of Ramadan. Then They'll be held responsible you have a responsibility India. not to listen to them. Stem but to follow the hukuk and the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, one more thing. Uh, there is a biological relation between the parents and the children. There is non-biological in such a way that they are stepmother and stepparents in the form of both father and mother. Do they have the same rights as far as the children uh, are concerned? Yes. So the, one, one, if your father marries uh, someone else, um, she also becomes your mother. Right. So that hukuk will have to be adhered to. Okay. And the mother-in-law and the father-in-law, are they mahram as well? Ji. They are mahram. Ji, they are. Okay. And one more thing, uh, who dominates uh, in regards to Islamic ruling, father or mother? Subhanallah. I think we mentioned that hadith earlier. Yeah. Um, they both have their rights. They both have their hukuk. Umma. But when it comes Umi. to the mother, Allahu Akbar, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know, I was asked, huh? Ya Rasulullah, Man ahakka bi husni sahabati. Who is the one I should spend more time with? Mom. Subhanallah. The Prophet said three times, not just once, three times. Your mother, ummu, ummu, ummu. Thumma abuk, then your father. Because your mother is your first madrasa. Your mother is your first, your foundation uh, is going to be cast there with the mother. Um, and, and the feeling a mother has towards a child. Uh, not to say the father does not have it. The father's got a lot of responsibilities. Mm, mm. Right, the father doesn't spend that much time at home uh, with the child. So the upbringing is usually the duty of the mother. We find it most, most of the times. And, and, and thus, I think, uh, the mother has been given this extra darja and extra uh, ranking that this is the person and personality who's got a higher maqam, a highest paradise, it's not at, under the feet of the father. It's under the feet of the mother. Under the feet of and the I mother. want to ask you one more thing related to this. Nowadays, there is a 
there is a bridge between the pa parents, especially the mother and the children. It's not that much of love they had. They used to have like the our parents, our children, ourselves. We had good uh, connection and good uh, what you call bond between us. I have seen something lacking from the medical point of view as well. Lactating mother. They don't nowadays feed their children, which is actually mentioned in Quran at least up to two years, and they are not giving that sort of uh, 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 right to the child and they unfortunately because of that the relation between them is not too strong is it's it because strong. of that why, why not I would say yes um, because there is hikmat in everything, everything. we do in Islam right. Right. right Allah would not have given us a certain ruling hmm. or instruction without a hikmat or without advantage for us so that bond that should have been there between mother and child, so if that is broken, it's going to affect that relationship in the yes. future. It's yeah. going to. Uh, unfortunately, we, uh, our time has elapsed, and now I have to uh, conclude this program with the pearls of wisdom from Hazrat Allah Mawlana Muhammad Mohsin Ashrafi Sahib Hazrat. Alhamdulillah, we need to realize that our parents are our medium and our wasila to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep your parents happy. So that Allah is happy. And if Allah is happy, we will be successful in this dunya, in the qabr, and in the hereafter. Inshallah. May Allah bless each and every one. Grant us the khair and barakah of our parents. And if your parents are no more, don't forget, make dua for them on a regular basis. Follow their teachings and keep ties with their family and with their friends. Jazakallah once again, Maulana, for your precious time. And uh, inshallah, we are uh, closing uh, this program. And tomorrow, uh, our topic is uh, zakat. And our guest of honor will be Hazrat Allah Mufti Abdul Nabi Hamidi Sahab, inshallah. And our topic is zakat. Stay tuned until tomorrow. And we have to conclude this program with the dua of Sahri. Bismillahir um, Rahmanir Rahim. Wa bi sawmi ghadin nawaitu min shahri Ramadan. I intend to keep the fast for the upcoming day of Ramadan. Until tomorrow, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.